Hello everyone, it's Red Herring. I hope you're having a great week so far. Uh, tomorrow is Friday. You're that much closer to the weekend. In this video, I'm going to go over 10 tips and tricks you may or may not know about uh, to make your period or make using your menstrual cups a little bit easier. If you find anything helpful or interesting in this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. There's several tips floating around, uh, such as use lube, try different folds, turn your cup inside out, uh, stuff like that. So I wanted to go over some other tips that might not be shared as much as those ones are. My first tip would be, if it's feasible, pick up two different menstrual cups. The reason why I say to have two different menstrual cups is that your body fluctuates and your cervix might drop a little bit lower, making your normal menstrual cup a little bit harder or a little bit less comfortable than it normally is. In that case, you can try out your other menstrual cup and see if it feels a little bit more comfortable for you. You'll probably want to get either a different brand, a different shape, or a different size. Personally, I have at least three that I like to grab for at any given time. Usually, I can wear one for my very heavy periods, but sometimes my cervix drops a little bit lower, making it harder for me to get that cup to open up. And instead of fumbling with it, I just go ahead and move on to another cup that inserts easier during that time and feels just as comfortable. My second tip would be to bear down, either when you're inserting your cup or removing your cup. When you're inserting your cup, you want to squeeze your muscles and bring your cervix a little bit lower to the opening of your vagina. This will help you insert your menstrual cup closer to your cervix. When you relax your muscles, your cervix will move up and your cup will follow suit. When you're removing your cup, it brings your cervix down again closer to the opening of your vagina and it'll help you reach your cup a little bit easier. If you have to collapse the rim to break the seal on the cup, you can reach the rim a little bit easier. My third tip would be to insert your finger to check your menstrual cup. So what I do is I insert a finger and I push it to the side and then I come back to where I started and I push it to the other side. What this is doing is it's spinning your menstrual cup. In the booklets, pamphlets, leaflets, whatever you get with your menstrual cup, it usually tells you to spin your cup. So this is a, one way that you can spin it just by pushing a little bit on the cup and then swiping it to the side. I always have a hard time just pinching, pinching the base and then trying to rotate my cup. So also when you're doing this, you can check that the cup is completely open and you can also check that your cervix is inside or above the menstrual cup. By making this a habit, you know that your cup is completely open, you know that your cervix is where it's supposed to be, and you know that you have a good seal. It'll help you eliminate any kind of leaking that you may have during the day. After you insert your menstrual cup, squat down and then bear down to bring your cup closer to the opening of your vagina. Then use a wet cloth or wet wipe, baby wipe, to reach your stem and grip rings. So you want to bring it as close as you can to the opening of your vagina. Take your wet cloth and wipe it just here around the stem if you didn't cut it off and or the grip rings right here as much as you can. A lot of people might think that they're leaking, but actually it could just be residual slobber. And what I mean by that is there's blood coating your vaginal walls. This blood will transfer over to your cup, start to slide down the length of your cup, end up on your stem, pooling down and ending up on your undies. And then you think you're leaking. 
by wiping your stem and your grip rings, it helps take away some of that excess blood and hopefully eliminate any spotting that you might have onto your underwear. Carry some wet wipes. You can find pre-moistened wet wipes in little packages that will fit nicely into a wallet, a clutch purse, a pocket, or a small wet bag. You can also take some baby wipes and just fold them up and put them into a snack bag. If you don't like to use disposables, you can always invest in some reusable cloth wipes or just cut out your own flannel squares. You can carry these around while they're wet or dry. Having any of those types of wipes allows you to wipe your cup down, wipe yourself down, or wipe your hands down so you can leave the stall without actually being caught red-handed. If you're going to be out a good part of the day, make sure you empty your cup before you leave. This will give you a fresh cup and allowing you the full capacity of the cup while you go on with your day. You won't have to worry about if your cup is almost full or if you need to find a stall soon to empty it. A lot of times when I dump out my menstrual cup at home, I find that my blood will stick to the bottom of the toilet bowl. And it's no big deal when I'm at home because I'm usually the only one home. So I can flush the toilet and leave the blood there. And over the course of the day, I'll flush the toilet again and I'll just keep removing that blood. Uh, but if you're out someplace else, at a buddy's house or out in public, you might flush that toilet and the blood stays there so you flush it again and maybe again. So to avoid doing that and wasting water, before you empty your menstrual cup or before you even sit down on the toilet, cover the water with a thin layer of toilet paper. Then you can empty the contents of your menstrual cup onto the toilet paper without the blood sticking to the bottom of the toilet bowl. Then when you flush the toilet, your blood inside of the toilet paper will also be flushed out with the water. I know that a lot of us get stringies that attach us like an umbilical cord to our menstrual cups when we're trying to empty our cups out. If you find this a problem, before you even sit down to empty your cup, have some toilet paper ready in your other hand. Then when you remove your menstrual cup, you have the toilet paper to swipe that blood off and detach yourself from your menstrual cup. You can finish dumping out your cup and just throw the toilet paper into the toilet. You might find that some menstrual cups stain easier or faster than some of the other menstrual cups. To help stop that staining, first you want to rinse your menstrual cup in cold water. This will help stop the stain from setting into your menstrual cup. After all of the blood is rinsed off, you can go ahead and wash your menstrual cup in hot water if you prefer. The final tip that I'd like to leave you with is to find a really good period tracker. There are some free trackers, there are some low cost trackers, and there's some very expensive trackers. One of the very expensive trackers I still really want to get. It's called the Bella Beat and I'll go ahead and leave their link down in the description if you're interested in finding out any more information about them. They don't only track your menstrual period, so please do check out that information if you're curious. I have tried some other trackers, but the tracker that I use currently and the one that I like the most is the Clue app. With the Clue app, it'll send you a notification when to expect your period so you're never unprepared. It tracks your period and it also tracks your ovulation. You can enter your mood swings, your cravings, your pains, uh, your cramps, your discharge, your sexual activity, all sorts of things on Clue and it's a really easy interface to use. Well, that wraps up my 
10 tips and tricks to help you have an easier menstrual cup experience and or period. Let me know in the comments below if you didn't know one of these or if you just recently tried it out and it worked well for you. Until I see you next time, take care.